Hello Jet Ski fans and welcome to another video. On this one I'm going to do a little bit of a channel update. I'm going to talk about the X2, where I'm at with it, what I'm going to do for a color scheme and the finish on the exterior. Some of you already know from my last video and I'm also going to talk a little bit of the uh, V8 Jet Ski manifolds for the Jet Ski Brothers. They are coming along nicely. Uh, first off, I will tell you guys that I had talked in the past about painting the outside of the X2 and at first I was going to just do a very simple uh, flat black and gloss black and then it kind of escalated from there and I decided that instead of just doing flat, flat black and gloss black what I would do is I would do flat black in some areas, but then I would do gloss black and actually put a candy into the clear so that it uh, had a green color to it. And then I would also put a silver metallic flake in there that would show up somewhat green at some angles because of the candy color in the clear. And then I also was going to buy uh, silver and do some of the graphics underneath on the base coat so that when I cleared over the whole thing, uh, yeah, it would show up like a greenish, silverish color, kind of almost like anodized. It turns out not only was that going to be extremely time consuming, which I knew, but it was also going to be very expensive. And because it was going to be very expensive, it kind of started to make more sense to do something that would be maybe a little less time consuming, a little bit different, and probably cost about the same, maybe even a little bit less by the time I was done. So if you watched my last video, you might have been confused by a couple of the clips that I put in there. But uh, yeah, what I'm actually going to do to the X2 is I'm going to do what they call carbon fiber skinning. So this isn't to add any kind of extra strength, although it might add a little bit. Because carbon fiber and fiberglass have very different characteristics, this actually won't add very much strength to it because if the body underneath flexes, basically the carbon fiber will break. For those of you who are not familiar with carbon fiber skinning, I will go over it very briefly. Basically what you do is add some black pigment to your epoxy. You paint over the surface with the epoxy and you wait a couple of hours until it starts to set up. So what you do at that point is you actually take the cloth and you very carefully lay the cloth over the surface. This is very tricky because you only get one shot at it. Uh, once the carbon fiber touches the epoxy, basically if you try to pull it back off, you're going to damage the weave. So uh, best case scenario, you have a weave that is messed up. Worst case scenario, you've completely ruined your job and you have to start all over again and buy more expensive carbon fiber. So I've never actually done this before. I've been watching videos on it for years and wanted to try it on something. I had no idea that I would be trying it on a jet ski hull for the first time. <laughs> but uh, what will probably happen, I'll probably end up doing a few pieces. I'll probably finish the uh, top, I don't know what you call it, console piece, the top uh, steering cover, and maybe a couple of the plugs in the hood. Before I show you guys the colors and patterns of the carbon fiber, I am first going to tell you guys something that I haven't mentioned on the channel before. I have talked about this on my Patreon account, but uh, I've never mentioned it on Instagram or on YouTube. So, I've actually ordered jet trim and I've ordered a hydro turf seat cover. And the color scheme that I'm going with, I had mentioned before that I wanted to do black, green, and a little bit of red accents just to be a little bit weird. So what I ended up doing, I got the custom HydroTurf seat cover. It is mostly black with carbon green accents and then red stitching. I'm curious to see what that turns out like because the photos just show you kind of a generic seat. And the jet trim, basically the same thing. I got the, basically the main part of it is going to be black. 
The trim is going to be lime green and then all of the stitching on it is going to be red. So I think that's going to be pretty cool. Also a few videos back I showed you guys that I got some lime green uh, ODI Ruffian grips. And I had ordered a set of burrs at the same time, but they were out of stock. I ended up not getting burrs. I'm either going to have to order another set or uh, I might just sandblast and powder coat mine. I've grown to kind of like them. I know that they're quite low and quite wide, but uh, I do have the uh, water injection going through them now to heat them. So that's one good reason to keep them. I'm going to stop talking now and show you guys the carbon fiber. I've basically told you the color scheme as far as I can without actually showing you this stuff. So yeah, let's just have a look at it. Um, I'm not going to completely unroll the carbon. I am extremely paranoid about damaging this or getting it dirty. Um, it wasn't cheap and chances of me doing something wrong with it here are pretty high. So I'm going to try to be careful and I've got a piece of plastic down over the top of the X2 hoping that uh, yeah dust and debris and crud doesn't get on my new shiny carbon fiber. <laughs> All right so I got this carbon fiber from uh, Carbon Envisions and uh, they did an amazing job of packaging it. Shipping was reasonable considering the care that they took with uh, packaging it up. Uh, with something like this, it's better off not to have terribly cheap shipping uh, because if the product arrives damaged, then it's not really any good to you. So here is one of the rolls of carbon fiber that I purchased. I got three meters of each, so I can choose at any time to change my mind about which I'm going to put on the top and which I'm going to put on the bottom. But as of now, the idea is to put the green stuff on the bottom, be a little bit understated, and then the patterned stuff, which they call checkerboard, is going to be on the top. So, this is an actual carbon fiber, real carbon fiber. It's about six ounces, and uh, it's a two by two twill weave, and then it also has some green uh, filament, uh, woven into it. So I'm going to pick up the camera and kind of show you guys. I think they call it reflections or illusions. I can't remember exactly which, but uh, when you look at it at different angles, you can see the green. Yeah, it's, it's kind of almost like a, one of those chameleon things. I'm not sure how well the camera picks that up, but I'm looking through the screen and I can kind of see the green following the camera. It's actually a little bit more dramatic in person than it is on the camera, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. So the idea is to put this stuff on the bottom of the hull. They tape it very nicely on the back side with masking tape and it uh, seems to be holding quite well, so I'm pleased with that. All right. I had mentioned earlier that the way that you put this stuff on is by uh, putting a dyed epoxy onto the part that you're coating. So in this case, I would be putting a black dyed epoxy onto the hull, waiting a couple hours for it to tack up and then coming back, laying the cloth over it and pushing the cloth into place, seating it down. And then once what you do is once that's set up a little bit, you actually paint over it with epoxy and basically build up the layers, sand it smooth, and you end up with a carbon fiber look. The thing that I'm quite concerned about here is that if I get any black on the green pigment, it's very likely going to ruin the look. And the reason why I got this stuff is because of the look. So I'm going to have to be very, very careful. This stuff is approximately the same weight per yard. It's a six ounce cloth, but it is, uh, it doesn't have any color added to it. And it's not a two by two twill. It's, uh, yeah, it's a patterned twill. So this is, Genuine real carbon fiber and 
strength is supposed to be comparable to uh, regular twill. They call it checkerboard, but I think it looks more like a fancy Gucci pattern or Louis Vuitton or something like that. Uh, one of my viewers commented saying that it looks uh, like a snake pattern, and now that they've said that, I do think that that is uh, pretty accurate. So, this is really hard to pick up. I don't know that even when it's on the ski, uh, you'll be able to tell the pattern very well. But uh, I'll give you guys a look. This pattern is a lot harder to see. I'll try to give you guys a good look of it here. You can kind of see there. Anyway. I think this actually turns up better through the camera than it does to my eye. That is interesting. So as you can see, I don't know, they call that checkerboard, but it has a very interesting pattern to it. Once again, the idea is to use this stuff on the top of the ski and the green stuff on the bottom. I do have enough of the green stuff, or hopefully I'll have enough of the green stuff left over so that I can do some of the highlights and trim on the top side. So I may end up using the green stuff to do the uh, little top cowling thing and the plugs in the top of the hood and whatnot. As I've already said, I've never carbon fiber skinned before and uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I enjoy doing different things. I thought it was really neat. I really like the look of it and I thought that uh, my viewers would really enjoy it as well. So I'm gonna give it a go and hopefully it turns out. I almost forgot about this stuff and when I remembered it, I wasn't sure if I actually was gonna tell you guys because I'm not 100% sure that I'm gonna use it or how much of it I'm gonna use or where I'm going to use it if I do use it. Uh, this stuff will be getting used. This is the black pigment. It uh, turns the epoxy into a opaque black coating. So this will be painted on the hull so that if you see through the carbon fiber anywhere, you don't see white underneath it. You see black underneath it instead. So yeah, it'll just stop any white spots from showing up. And I can probably also use this to uh, mix with epoxy and paint the inside of the hull because I'm just going to be painting the inside of the hull with uh, either black epoxy primer or this stuff if I have enough of it. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use this stuff. It is a transparent green pigment. So basically it's like a candy for clear coat and paint, but it's designed for epoxy. So it turns the clear epoxy into a green candy looking uh, material. So you can still see through it, but it has a green tint to it. Uh, you can mix this in different ratios and get a darker or lighter color and Yeah, I'm gonna test this out and see what it actually turns out like if it turns out anything like they're showing on the picture here, then I won't be using it because well, yeah, that's Not a very nice green the next thing that I got is basically this metal flake stuff it's like using a metallic in uh, paint or a flake in your clear coat. I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna use this or if I do use it where I'm gonna use it. I got two different ones. Uh, this one is called emerald green and this one is called just green. And so this one has quite heavy flakes. It's kind of almost like bass boat flake. So I might use that in a couple of highlighted areas. So once again, you would mix this into the epoxy and coat it on over the carbon fiber. You would still be able to see the carbon fiber in the background, but it would have a shimmer of green because of these flakes in there. And then this stuff is quite a bit more fine. It's a very fine, uh, what do you call it? More like a metallic than a flake. And so this stuff, again, would just add a little bit of sparkle to the... Uh, Epoxy, I keep wanting to call it clear. 
While we're on the topic of clear coat or finishing coat, I thought I should address this question because I'm sure people will be asking. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing for the final coat or the finish. I might just be buffing out the epoxy itself, but I have to find out from the manufacturer of the epoxy if this stuff will yellow in the sunlight. If I have to clear coat over the top of it, it adds a bunch of time and quite an extra expense. So I'm kind of hoping that I don't have to do that. I've kind of already said this, but I thought I would mention again, just to make sure everything is crystal clear. The carbon fiber is not a substitute for strength. I still need to do a proper job at getting all my patches and repairs done. I need to do proper sanding. This thing has to be perfectly smooth and uh, ready for paint basically. But then instead of paint, I'm putting carbon fiber on over the top. The carbon fiber will have a few layers of epoxy over the top of it, which gets sanded, wet sanded, and then buffed and polished. Very likely that will be the final finish. And uh, it will just look like a carbon fiber ski. I'm sure that there are going to be people in the comments section who want to tell me that this isn't going to work, that I shouldn't have chosen it, such a big project as my first project, that it's going to look silly, that it's not real carbon fiber, that it's pointless, that it's going to make it heavy, and you're completely entitled to your opinion, and I respect that. I'm going to do this because I want to do it, because I think it's going to look cool, because I like trying new things, and because I think a lot of my viewers are going to enjoy it as well. I might end up making a video where I say, hey, it didn't work and now I have to sand all this expensive carbon fiber off of my hull. But uh, yeah, you never succeed if you don't try. The only true way to fail is by never trying at all. So uh, I'm going to give this a go and hopefully it turns out. So let's talk a little bit now about the Jetski Brothers V8 exhaust manifolds. The project is coming along nicely. You may have caught a couple of shots of stuff that's been happening in the background. And if you follow my Instagram, you may have seen that I posted a few things on there. If you follow me on Patreon, you would have seen even more stuff. When I tell you the progress that I've made, it probably won't seem like that much, but uh, there was a lot involved. I don't think it's going to come through in the video how much really was involved in it, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's just the way it is. When you edit a video, you can't have it five hours long. And uh, yeah, you end up with uh, video clips that are kind of interesting. And a lot of the time it makes it look like something was really easy when it actually wasn't. So what I did do was I ended up getting all of the primary runners, all of the angle pieces welded together and welded onto the flange. To give you guys an idea of how much work this actually was, I think I spent about 10 or 12 hours welding the primary runners together and onto the flanges. Uh, I also used a half of bottle of argon, so I used uh, 40 cubic feet of argon. I might release another update video Wednesday or Thursday, depending on what I get done, but I'm assuming that I probably won't release the completion video on this project until next Sunday. I'm going to spend a lot of time working on it this upcoming week, and as I said, I think I've gotten the biggest part of this done. There is still quite a bit of work to do. I have to figure out the inlet and outlet uh, water connections. I have to figure out the outlet for the exhaust and I have to basically close it up around the outlet for the water jacket and a couple other things. Anyway, I'm going to try to make the next video on Sunday very condensed. If you guys want to see more of it, I will save the footage and do it like an extras video or a bonus video, an unlisted video where I, uh, yeah, do a lot less editing and show you guys a bunch more of the footage but I have several hours of footage collected from this uh, project and I'm definitely not gonna make you guys sit through all of it. So. I feel like there's something that I'm forgetting to tell you guys, but I've gotta go and edit this video so you guys can actually watch it. That is gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.